Welcome. I'm Nate Coulter, the Executive Director of the Library, and I appreciate all of you coming. One of my friends, Paul Phillips, here from Cruz, has said, I didn't know you had this many friends at the library lately. <laughs> we, Cal's has a lot of friends. That's the reason we can build this fabulous building uh, that we're going to embark on. And I'm grateful that uh, so many of you are here. Appreciate, uh, appreciate Mayor Scott being here. We've got members of the Central Arkansas Library System Board. Ryan Davis is here. Judge Audrey Evans. Alexis, uh, where is Alexis? Alexis and her daughter Charlotte are here from Maldell. Uh, David Pickbinder from uh, all the way in from Perry County. Thank you, David, for driving in. And Luke Underwood is here. He's a Little Rock representative. There are 13 members of the library board. If you see them or you know them, thank them for their volunteer service at the library. We meet once a month. There's no heavy lifting, but they do a lot of things. And, uh, uh, Alexis Sims has been on the board a year and she's already taken a lot of leadership responsibility. So we're really grateful to have all of them here. Also grateful to my staff, so many of them helped make this possible. Uh, those in particular who are working on the front lines of this project uh, would be Joe Spencer, the Chief Financial Officer, and Gonzalo is the uh, head, of, head of all the things that have to do with facilities around here. Uh, Gonzalo, where are you? Wave. There you are, right here. Thank you, Gonzalo, and uh, Joe is seated next to him. Joe Hudak is right here. He's the manager of this library, one of the regional uh, managers for the system. Joe's been working with the staff and the architects for at least a year or so on fine points about what the staff needs and how the library can work best for the community. And I also want to give uh, great thanks to Tamika Lee and all of her communications staff. They are here in force. And, they're the ones who put these events on, and we're grateful that they do such a great job for us at every turn. I also want to acknowledge, uh, as a matter of personal privilege, my friend Bobby Roberts, who's back here. And Bobby's been re re retired from the library for eight years, but his impact, his impact is still felt every day. This old Fones Brothers warehouse became the library uh, because of Bobby Roberts' vision and because of his uh, talent in getting things done. Uh, when Bobby first started talking about turning the old Phones Brothers warehouse into the downtown library, uh, it was knee high deep in water in the basement. And there was no river market down here. This was 1993, 1994 when Bobby had that vision. So I want to ask you to give Bobby Roberts a round of applause for his vision. <laughs> You'll be fussing me for doing that, but I had to do it. <laughs> I want to just give you a little bit of background. This is another step, an important step uh, in a process that's been going on to revitalize that library that Bobby had the vision to put down here in 1996 when it finally opened. Remodeling this library and investing in downtown Little Rock uh, again it's really been a process that started in May of, of 2021, sorry, November 2021. The library proposed, if you recall, in the fall of 2021 that we needed more money to operate the library, more money to buy books, particularly digital books, because they're more and more expensive. And we told the voters, if you will give us a half a million more to operate, to sustain this great library, we will give you an opportunity to give, take that back in the next election cycle. And the voters made that swap. They gave us another uh, half mil to operate this uh, fabulous library in the following spring, in May of 22, they lowered their property tax committed to capital improvements like this. And they extended the commitment to pay it. So as a result of all that, with no net tax increase, we had an increased budget for buying books, an increased budget for retaining programmers, doing story times, doing all the things that people love inside the libraries. And we got more money to revitalize this building and a project that's already been ongoing for several months down on Chester uh, and Wright Avenue, the Williams Branch, which is going to be fantastic. It's going to open a lot sooner than this one, but we're excited about all that and appreciate that the voters had the wisdom to do this and to renew their commitment to this library. So just quickly to tell you that as a result of that commitment to give us more money to operate, our library has bought more books. We have bought particularly more digital books. We looked recently, and we are in the top handful of libraries, our peers, in the short time you have to wait to get a popular title when you want it. 
Carol, what is it, about 13 days? And if any of you have a book that you want and you're having to wait more than three or four weeks, let me know. We can help you figure out a way around that. Get, get another book. But I'm proud of that. And I think that's another one of these examples. I'm always telling the mayor, take credit for this library in Little Rock. It's punching above its weight across the country. We are a great library, not because of me or all the wonderful 300 people who work here, but because of the community support of it. Now, you might say to me, well, your, your digital circulation is growing. It is. It contributed significantly to a 5% growth in overall circulation last year. And every library since Kindle was invented in the United States has seen a decline in print circulation. But our growth in digital circulation has been fabulous. It's partly because you invested more money. So you might say, a skeptic might say, well, Nate, why spend $30 million investing in remodeling this old building when the, it's an era of digital content? And there are several good answers to that. Usually that kind of question comes from my friends who hadn't been in the library in five or six years. But let me tell you briefly three reasons why I'm bullish on this project. First of all, the city deserves it. The people who devoted themselves for 30 years since Bobby became the leader to renewing their community library deserve the best facilities, the best state-of-the-art places that you can go to in a public library. I, we visit a lot of libraries, Pier cities, Tulsa, Austin. We owe it to our community to have at least as nice a library, I think nicer than those places. We don't have to play second fiddle. We can have a fantastic library. The second reason, I believe, is that we are joining what I think is a critical mass of cultural amenities in this part of the city. I see my friend Christina Littlejohn, who helped get started recently the Stella Boyle Smith Music Center down the street. It's fantastic. It's going to be a great community asset. Um, I think my friend uh, Victoria Ramirez is here. There she is. She opened last year in April a fantastic museum. Everybody knows that the great museum in Benton County is great, but we don't want to take a back seat to that. Architecturally and in so many other ways, our museum is fabulous. So we want to play our small part in this critical mass of having these cultural amenities in this neighborhood that I think help make the city more attractive for people who want to think about living here, working here. And third, and this is a little more long run, but it's important. A lot of studies show that the more connection people have to community, the longer they live, the healthier they are. Last year in May, the Surgeon General put out an advisory saying that loneliness caused by isolation was having terrible health consequences. They called it a, an epidemic of loneliness. And the report says that being isolated and suffering loneliness, whether you're young or old, has the same effect as on your long-term health as smoking 15 cigarettes a day. <laughs> Now, the library, I may be biased, but I believe the Surgeon General's report agrees, the library is one of the best places to help people find connection to community. And they can do it at the ASO, they can do it at the museum, the living room. So we want to be a part of all that because it will make people healthier and it will make people feel more connected and less lonely, less isolated. So quickly, let me just give you some numbers and how I think this is going to change these numbers. In 2022, in the first eight months of this year, before we closed on September 1st, we had about 2,300 programs in this building, the other library venues, the theater, and the other spaces across the street, the Roberts Library. Over 70,000 people attended the programs involving authors and story times, and after school activities, and genealogy, and photography, art by Wingates, uh, through Wingates Grant. Over that same 20 month period, from January 1 of 22 till September last year, there were right at a quarter of a million visitors in this building. And there, you do the math on it for last year before we closed, that's about 425 people a day. That is, I believe, a very small fraction of what we will have here once we get this upgraded to where it ought to be. We can double, triple, quadruple that number if you look at what goes on in these other libraries that have state, other cities that have state-of-the-art libraries. That's what we're gonna do. And we're gonna give people an opportunity to connect and have community and we're going to give them what they want to be healthier, and smarter, more, just more entertained, or just a place to hang out. I tell people every day, I don't care if they don't want to use any of our things. They just want to come here because it's going to be a nice place. 
And one of the things, we're going to make a little bit of news here, then I'm going to turn this over to the architect who will tell you a little bit more, some of the details of what you can imagine is going to happen here. But one of the things that we're going to do to create community is partner with Christina and Sonia from Boulevard. Where are they? They here? I know Christina said, I'll be there, but I don't want to talk. <laughs> Christine and Sonia founded this business uh, years and years ago. How long? 2000. 2000, 23, 24 years ago. And <clears throat> they have created community in three locations across the city ever since. And that's what we want them to bring down here. So where you're standing, Stephen, will be the heart of a new Boulevard Bread Company cafe right here. <laughs> driving through, hill, uh, through the heights on the day, second day after the snow, trying to see who's open. I was a little embarrassed that we hadn't gotten open back down at the library, but Boulevard was open. And one of my friends, an uh, old lawyer friend who's now retired, was fighting the snow and ice to cross Cavanaugh to get into the Boulevard. And I know Skip Henry goes in there all the time with his other old lawyer, retired buddies. Uh, Roger Glasgow might get in that group. <laughs> They're building community because that's that's a place that's attractive to them. So that's what we want you to bring down here, Christina. Uh -huh. We're so grateful that you're willing to partner with us, and we look forward to that as an opportunity. So let me sit down and introduce uh, Reese Rowland, who will tell you a little bit about other things that, that you'll be able to see here. <clears throat> Reese promises me, the, pe the good people at CDI promise me that once they get started in the next few weeks, that it'll be 12 to 14 months. That's longer than I would like, as old as I am, I want things to happen soon. But we're going to work at it hard so that we'll be back here in the not too distant future celebrating what this is going to look like. But let me get Reese up here to give you a little bit of idea of what it's going to look like. Well, thanks, Nate. Uh, you know, when this project was announced, we, uh, a bunch of architects, we got together and said, let's fit our own team back together. So we put together the exact team that did the Bob, uh, worked for Bobby 25, 30 years ago. Folks, Stanley Wilcox Architects, WR Architects, and Stocks Man Architects. And, and so we put together some of the best creative minds, you know, for this project. And so you might ask yourself, well, why do this? You know, what? And Nate kind of stole my thunder a little bit talking about the river market. You know, when when Bobby and his team and, and board made this decision years ago, it was I think there was a lot of why do this. And now look at the results. You know, it kicked off the river market. We now have a presidential library. It looked across what was the interstate ramp at all the people living downtown now in these condo towers, apartments, renovated homes that were separated from the river market by an interstate ramp. You know, part of the reason that this building is more inward looking and, and solid, as you can see on these sides, was the noise of that interstate ramp. Well, that's gone. And so foot traffic has increased dramatically over the last 25 years in the River Market District. So the removal of the ramp, condo living, pedestrian traffic, why not open the library back up? Secondly, libraries have changed in the last 25 years. What was perfect for uh, a library back then has now, through all the things you've talked about, a library has changed. And, and what we really want to create here in the space you're standing in is really a living room for Little Rock. You know, you're actually, these two bays are going to be the, the, the boulevard. And a slider wall is going to open up here to the, to the rest of the library. The things that we've gotten accustomed to, the ramp, is going to go away. We're putting in a new elevator and a new stair over here on the front of the building. And we're opening up the front of the building in glass. As you can see, because we're reorganizing the building, where all the books are on one through four in the front half of the building. Very easily accessible, easy to get to and find. You get off the stair, you get off an elevator, and right there's help, and the books are right in front of you. What's even more exciting about it is we're moving the children's library area to, to level one. So the back half of this first floor and, and right above it is a team area, uh, both connecting to the courtyard and a great space for, for youth uh, for activities in what is the old Dara Center. Now you say, what's happening there? Well, we're moving those meeting spaces to the fifth floor. <laughs> the fifth floor's gonna be a fantastic open space for dialogue and people to come for meetings um, and events. And capping it all off will be an outdoor uh, rooftop event space with the columns 
the letters library to be seen from all over the district itself. So imagine as a parent, a grandparent, a guardian coming into this place, being able to grab a sandwich or a coffee or a drink, sit here, read a book, and, 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 and your kids be secure behind really colorful glass walls right where the camera is. We're cutting a hole down into the basement area and it's gonna be a very active computer lab space. Um, we're making this building accessible for all and uh, unique for Little Rock and you know we could not be more proud as architects, as designers, as patrons you know that have lived here, grown up here, brought our kids to this library and other libraries. This is personal to us as designers and personal to us um, you know and, and we're just thankful for the opportunity to do this but more, more than that we cannot wait for opening day when all of you come in and you look at this transformed space and you're gonna say, is this the same building? And it's gonna be really fun. So, thank you. <laughs> One of my staff members, I counted a lot, I didn't mention, but I, she can give me the answer to this. Eliza, we did the numbers on how many of the square, how many more square feet are gonna be devoted in the new building to children and teen and youth activities. Do you know what that was? 70%. 17? 70. 70%. 70 so it's three fourths again the size of what we have voted. We have a significant amount here, but it's going to be, as uh, Reese said, it's going to be focused on trying to make this place uh, for people like Robert, Lindsay, Coons, kids, uh, a place they want to be even if they live uh, a little bit farther from here. So we're very excited about all that. I'm going to introduce uh, our good friend who's been very supportive from the very beginning of his tenure as Little Rock Mayor in 2019, uh, Mayor Frank Scott. He's always responded. We've asked him to help us with something. Uh, Mayor, I think you've got an ordinance up tonight to try to make sure we can put those uh, pillars up there that Reese described. Uh, I think it'd be fine. <laughs> One of the things I want to give the mayor credit for is he's been leading to create the master plan for downtown Little Rock. Uh, the city uh, invested money to, to hire a consultant out of Denver, uh, Sasaki, that is being led by someone who's a native of Little Rock, graduate of Central High, so he has love for the city. Uh, I see uh, Representative Denise Ennis here, and she's uh, worked with them. Uh, somebody told me last week that this uh, is no longer still in your district, Representative, and it's in Tiffy McCullough's district, but I've been giving you credit to, for, for being in your district. It's in uh, Ward uh, uh, Director Virgil Miller's uh, ward, but he also helps us with the city, and so we're just very, very grateful. One of the other things we want the city to help us do, for Christina's sake and for all the people who are gonna come here, is this space where the freeways used to be making all sorts of noise uh, and congestion, is an opportunity for the city of Little Rock. We've been working for 18 months to, to get people in the neighborhood, people who work here, people who live here, to come up with ways to repurpose that. Uh, it's a small space, but you can do a lot of things there. So that someday people can be sitting in the library on the fifth floor or in, in Boulevard and look out on all sorts of activities for people who are on this green space right here. So it's another great opportunity. So the mayor's gonna help us uh, find a way to do that. Mayor Frank Scott, appreciate you being here. Nate and uh, the members of the Central Arkansas Library System Board of Directors, we definitely appreciate you and the great work that you have for us today. Uh, it is a great time uh, to be in the city of Little Rock as we're experiencing uh, this true resurgence of downtown. Uh, as has already been stated, if you take into account uh, the half a billion dollars that we're seeing under construction with the Interstate 30 and to bring to fruition a 18 acre park that the city will figure out a way uh, to fund. Uh, we got close to another half a billion dollars of construction when you really take into account. And Central Arkansas Library System is playing a critical role in this development. I want to give a shout out to Gabe Holstrom. Uh, while the city is leading this effort, Gabe Holstrom is really doing all the work alongside Sasaki uh, and many others at Carroll Worley and the Downtown Little Rock Partnership to ensure uh, that we see not only this resurgence, uh, but a revitalization. Uh, one of the things when you are the big mama in the largest, state, largest city in the, cap, uh, in, the, in the state, and the capital city, uh, things can get a bit dated. Uh, and we can sometimes fall on our laurels. 
And so one of the things that we've made a commitment is that we were going to have a resurgence, a revitalization to truly ensure that our city continues to be on a cutting edge. And so that's what you're seeing when you see the Stella Boyle Smith Music Center being erected right now. You have a $100 million expansion of the Secretary Clinton uh, expansion wing of the President, President Clinton Library, which is already a $3 billion impact. You have the Central Arkansas Library System that is in the heart of the river market. And what it's doing right now, because not only is the library, many people don't realize it's an economic engine. How? Because we have so many entrepreneurs who are igniting their passion just by reading a book, having a meeting right here, because there are places they could be. This is truly a third place here in the city of Little Rock. And so when we see it as an economic engine, we see it as a place of cultural education and cultural connections, it helps us grow as a city. And it doesn't happen without each of you, particularly the residents that have helped pass that 2021 millage, that 2022 millage. And I'm sure he's going to come back for something later because that's what Bobby Roberts would always do. They, never, they, they always never get enough. Uh, and that being stated, we just want to share our appreciation to the leadership and Nate and all the things that you guys are doing to understand the resurgence that you're seeing right now. And by the time the 2025 comes and we have this 18-acre park, this will somewhat almost be completed, being finished. And I still remember, I see Ryan right here, uh, we, we kind of grew up together. I remember when this place was built, I was in junior high school in 1996. And I remember that excitement. And you're gonna have that same excitement here going forward. Thank you. to the moment everybody's been waiting for. So are you really going to bash those walls? Uh, inside. When, when, inside. When Gonzalo came up with this idea, he went to Joe Spencer, the, the finance director, and said, uh, Joe, can we bring these uh, sledgehammers and do the wall then? She said, yeah, I can swing that, but you better check my name. I'm not so sure. And, and we're, they're all going to put on uh, I'm a lawyer, but this wasn't me. We're all going to put on gloves and goggles because the lawyer for the library has told us we have to do that to comply with your shit. Pardon me, young man. Oh, it's his brand. I understand. I got it. who I was thinking about when it hit